Hello and welcome to the session on simple interest compound interest. I'm Ravi Handa and you can provide feedback via Twitter. My Twitter handle is at the rate Ravi Handa. In today's session, we are primarily going to talk about simple interest, compound interest and growth rates, which are the AAGR and the CAGR. In case you don't know, AAGR stands for average annual growth rate, whereas CAGR stands for compounded annual growth rate. Essentially, they are just applications of simple interest and compound interest. The first thing that we need to understand is what exactly is interest and stuff. Basically, the amount that is you have borrowed or you have given to someone is known as the principal amount. Then interest gets added to it over a period of time to make the final amount. Simple interest is calculated by the formula PNR upon 100, where P is the principal which is given or taken, N is the number of years, R is the rate of interest, that divided by 100, whereas compound interest is calculated by a slightly more complicated formula, P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power N minus P. It is also very important to understand why does it happen this way. See, essentially what happens in simple interest is, let's say you give out 100 rupees to someone at 5% simple interest. Then every year he will pay you back 5 rupees as interest for whatever be the period of time. Let's say in the first year he'll pay you 5 rupees. If you had given the amount to him for 2 years, he would have paid you 10 rupees as interest. If you had given him the amount for 3 years, he would have given to you 15 rupees as interest. If you had given the amount to him for 50 years, then for every year 5 rupees, for 50 years it would simply be 250 rupees. But it is not so simple with compound interest. In compound interest, let's say if you had given 100 rupees at 5%, then in the first year the amount that you are going to get will be 5 rupees. But beyond that, the next 5% will be charged at the higher value which is at 105 rupees. The year after that, again, it will be charged at the new amount. So the base or the principle at which the rate of interest 5% in this case is charged, it keeps on changing every year. With this, you can lead to a very important conclusion that the simple interest and compound interest are same for a certain sum of money, which is P at a certain rate R per annum for the first year. As you could see in this case, in first year, simple interest was also 5 rupees, whereas the compound interest was also 5 rupees. But that will not happen once you go beyond the first year. The difference after a period of two years, well, that is a formula which you can remember, is PR square by 100 square where P is the principal and R is the rate of interest. If you have to calculate beyond that, I suggest you use the formula and calculate the interest and then see the difference. Once again, to repeat, the key difference between simple interest and compound interest is, in simple interest, interest every year remains constant, 5 rupees for every year, whereas in compound interest, Whatever is the interest, it keeps on getting added to the principal. So uh, you can say that the interest in the seventh year, whatever it is, will be more than the interest in the sixth year, will be more than the interest in the fifth year. Because every year the base becomes bigger. There are a couple of ideas related to compound interest, such as the population formula. Let's say the population of a particular country, a particular place is P right now and it changes at the rate of R per year. Then what will be the population n years later? Well, same idea as compound interest P into 1 plus R by 100 to the power n. It is not necessary that the population would increase. Well, at least for humans it is necessary, but I don't think for other animals, let's say for tigers, let's say for tigers it is falling at the rate of R, then your formula will become P into 1 minus r by 100 to the power n. Essentially, all you need to take care of is the sign of r, whether it is plus or minus, the formula is analogous to compound interest. Very similarly is the depreciation formula. Again, it is the initial value 
into 1 minus r by 100 to the power n. Say you buy a car which depreciates in value by 10% every year. Suppose you bought the car for 4 lakh rupees. Then after 1 year it would have depreciated by 10% or it would be 3 lakh 60,000 rupees. Now after 2 years what will be its value? Will it be another 40,000 less? No. It will be 10% less of 36,000. That is why I have used the compound interest formula here. So you will subtract 36,000 from 3,60,000 to get 3,24,000. What will be the value next year? Well, now you will have to subtract 32,400 and so on. For these sort of cases, you need to use the depreciation formula, which is given by initial value into 1 minus r by 100 to the power n. Very similarly is the concept of growth and growth rates. I don't think I need to explain you what absolute growth is. Well, whatever is the final value minus the value that you started with, that is the growth. But when you have to calculate the growth percentage, then it is final value minus initial value on the base of the initial value into 100. This formula will give you the growth in percentage terms. Now I come to the two important concepts of AAGR or CAGR. Actually, the average annual growth rate is very similar to simple interest. Let's say if you had earned uh, interest of 50 rupees in 10 years, then what was your average return? Well, 5 rupees, which is what is happening here. Whatever was your growth percentage, you divide it by the number of years, you will get simply your average annual growth rate. In case of CAGR, however, it is not that simple. Here you will have to do final value minus initial value divided by initial value up raised to the power 1 by number of years minus 1. Confused? Well, anyone would be confused if he sees the formula for the first time. But please notice that this formula, final value minus initial value upon initial value and all this is essentially coming from your formula for compound interest, which was p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power n minus p. So let's say if all the variables were given to you in this formula and you were supposed to find out the rate, the r, that will be CAGR and that is what is given by this particular formula. You can use this formula if you like or you can simply use amount as amount in case of simple uh, in compound interest as p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power n and then calculate the rate of interest it will lead to the same thing i've just written down this formula so that for those of you who want to use it directly can use it but once again using the original formula for compound interest is also okay but you might realize that this will be a little difficult to calculate how are you going to calculate 1 by 4 or 1 by 7th power or something. That is the reason I have highlighted this very important point. If the time period is more than one year, well, if the time period is one year, you don't have to do anything. You will get the CAGR directly. Then CAGR will always, always be lesser than the AAGR. This can be used for approximating the value of CAGR instead of calculating it. What I mean by this is, let's say you are given a question in which you have to find out the CAGR. Difficult calculation, I agree with you. What you should do is find out the AGR and take a value which is little lesser than that. That will also lead you to the correct answer because the CAGR is always, always lesser than the AGR. This might help you eliminate a couple of options. With this, I'd like to wrap up this session. Please provide feedback at my Twitter handle at the rate Ravi Handa or you can also email me directly on my mail ID which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.